commencing operation lack of transportation as we dive into these comics you will notice a theme the autobots tend to roll out while i walk everywhere and get more than my fair share of steps in for the day perhaps it may be time to find a more suitable alt mode to keep up with all the action for now let's tune in for today's special of swerves bar podcast a kilobyte corner episode Hello, and welcome to another special segment of Kilobytes Corner, where I cover the comics Onyx, Prime, and Computron are too busy to revisit, but are part of the timeline. Today, we are covering Transformers G.I. Joe First Strike. And as always, spoiler warning. So if you haven't read it already, I highly recommend you go back, read the comic, and then come back and listen to the podcast. Now, onward with the podcast. We're going to start with some fun facts and then some trivia. There are seven comics in this volume and a mini issue of The Origins of Evil. Issue zero was released June 14, 2017, and The Origins of Evil was released October 11, 2017. Writer are Margaret Scott and David A. Rodriguez. Art by Max Dunbar, James Reyes, John Barber, with colors by Ander Sarrett, David Garcia, Cruz, and inks by John Wycog. Walden Wong, and Pencils by Nitho Diaz. Now for some trivia. In issue 1, on page 7, when Optimus says to get Starscream and Marisa to Echo Point, Starscream is flanked by what appears to be two onslaughts. One of these is a miscolored brawl. The same miscoloration is repeated in a panel further down the page. In issue 6, in the signal, Cybertron is drawn based on how it appears in the aligned continuity family. That is incongruous choice, though Align Cybertron is covered in circular cities, so its appearance is a poor match for IDW Cybertron, which is meant to be a wasteland with one functional population center. Now, for some summaries. Joe Colton approaches Garrison Krieger in order to prepare for war against Cybertron. On the day of Earth induction into the Cybertronian Council of Worlds, Baron Ironblood strikes. Mass accompanies G.I. Joe to Autobot City to get help. While more members of Baron Ironblood's villainous group step out of the shadows to proceed with the next step of their plan. Scarlet Teams joins the fight on Cybertron. Scarlet and her team become victims of Cybertronian politics as Colton's group nears their final objective. Optimus Prime is forced to act outside the law if he wants to stop Joe Colton and save Cybertron. And finally, Scarlet leads the fight to stop Colton's team from enacting their plan, but one of Colton's allies has been hiding a magical secret that is about to change everything. And we first start off with Joe Colton and Krieger planning and talking about an artifact called the Talisman that will allow them to kill Cybertron, the planet, and with it all Cybertronians, and stop the threat of Cybertronians on Earth. But before we can learn more, we flip to modern day when Optimus and the human alliance are gathered in Iacon, getting ready to indoctrinate Earth into the Council of Worlds. And everything seems fine, while bombs go off and we see Captain Ironblood and his group of, uh, what you call it, mercenaries, attack Cybertron and start creating havoc. Many bots fall, many fights are happening, they are cyber ninjas around, they are some uh, mechanical drones that can transport humans into Cybertron as well. So they have a lot of big guns. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, on Earth, Scarlet from the G.I. Joes are gathering information on how this happened and trying to find a way to get to Cybertron because Starscream decided to close off the space bridge, cutting every connection from Earth to Cybertron. So they seek the help of Soundwave. And Soundwave tells them they're too late, there's nothing they can do. But Scarlet knows Joe Colton, and she knows everything that he's capable of, capable of since he's the one that trained her. And through deduction and reasoning and trying to analyze what Colton is doing, she gets a clue on how they got there. And they have a there's a machine 
that they can use to use a pinpoint a location through the using the space bridge signature and teleport themselves to Cyberton. And when they arrive, they are met with Ironhide and a bunch of the Iron Blood uh, forces fighting. So with that, Optimus steps in and the Council of Worlds step in and they are in, put in jail because they're humans and Cybertronians do not trust humans. So they decide to put them in jail before anything worse can happen. And they're they're wanting to capture Joe Colton without using any help from the exterior because they you know they want to be ready. Optimus sees that Joe Colton's men have prepared traps and have overtaken many Cybertronians. Ironhide Sunstreaker currently dies in the battle. Uh, we see the twins from the the Torchbearers join the fight. And they they help our team travel and reach Cybertron. So there's plenty of fighting going on both on Earth and on Cybertron. And while that is happening, Optimus decides that he needs to free Scarlet and allow them to fight Joel Colton and lead them to it. So with the help of RC and Soundwave, he does that. And while risking his life, pretty much, because while risking his title, not his life, Optimus risks his title in order to do the right thing. And by freeing Scarlet and her group, they manage to meet up with Joe Colton. A fight ensues. And when all seems to be concluded, Krieger shows his real face. And they say that they are a being from a different dimension that have magical powers. And they activate the talisman, draining Cybertron from their Energon. And transferring the Energon to a planet we call Unicron. And that's pretty much where it ends. After all the fighting, the Council of World still doesn't trust humans. Alita, Optimus, Starscream, Windblade have a fallout. Windblade decides not to bow to any more primes. Optimus tries to use his name uh, for something in in the in the argument, and they they're like, "We don't care. You you're no longer." that relevant or important there's a council of world you know you're no longer in a war you're no longer leading anybody so it's your fault why we're here so there's a lot of bridges that were burned in this fight and oh boy was it a fight but that that's pretty much it at the end with the mini series of the origin of evil we just get a little introduction and preview of how uh, iron blood recruited all these villains to join him and attack cybertron and that's pretty much it for the, for these comics. I really like the art. I like some of the the designs of the characters. Like Alita One looks pretty cool. Uh, we got the twins from the Torchbearers. They look pretty cool, and I'm glad they got to show them off a little bit more because we haven't seen much of the Torchbearers, and it's always fun. There were some things with like the 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 bad guy at the end, Krieger, when he becomes and his true self, and he uses magic to drain the Energon from Cybertron and pretty much Optimus says that they've been drained and they're on the floor. So I assume like they were, they were like turned off or put into stasis, but then in, in a few panels later, they're moving. So I got to kind of got a little bit confused on how that happened and why is this entity helping Unicron? Uh, we'll see how that goes. I do like that Optimus is kind of losing his grip on how he dealed with things before because you know optimus primes used to mean mean something but now it doesn't really mean anything and uh, you can we can clearly see it here when alita and starscream and windblade kind of like fight him back and not let him just use his title as uh you gotta do what i want you know kind of thing which was a, a little bit of shocking but it's kind of been slowly happening with we've seen pyromagna we've seen windblade in the past as well kind of also get that resentment so it was pretty cool to see it and i wonder what optimus is going to do now because he he flings that title around and he doesn't seem to be doing anything really that's pretty much it the gi joe part of it it's mostly focused on the gi joe aspect of it like scarlet's perspective and the cybertronians are added in there just because it's on their planet but we can kind of see everything on scarlet's perspective and she's narrating the story and how Colton trained her and a little bit more of a backstory on her really than everything else but I don't think it was 
bad that they focus on the humans in this case. I thought it was interesting seeing like the perspective of Scarlet's training and kind of what Joe Colton is really, how he really is when it comes to fighting. It's pretty much a crossover for, again, with all the entities, because you have G.I. Joe, you have Mask, you have the Micron universe. And then you have the Transformers, so it's just a, a collection of all of their... Oh, the Rom, Rom the Knights of Solaris show up as well. Uh, they don't really do anything, they just are in space, and they tell them, hey, you've been... We detect Wraith on your planet, and then they're, the planet, they just say, like, the planet's quarantined, and there's nothing else. There's nothing you can do. And they don't do anything else, and we don't see any Wraiths, uh, at least the the ones we've seen before with the fleshy and all the spikes so it was kind of like okay they just showed up because they wanted to show up it's pretty much it that happened and overall i i would give this three rod stars it's an okay story i wish i knew more of all the other characters and brands that they're bringing in and maybe that'll make it go up but since we're just focusing on transformers then I feel like there's maybe some information that I'm missing on how other characters work and their dynamic and you know how they how they really feel to it. So it's it's kind of hard to determine. It's an okay story. It was interesting figuring out what the Joe Colton's plan was and how they were gonna really do that. Humans do overpower Cybertronians in this comic, and it's mostly the Cybertronic ninjas, and I can see it like. The more ninjas they are, the more weaker the cyber training could become, you know, because you're being overpowered by 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 sheer quantity, not really size. And it's it's a stretch, but they need to balance it somehow. But I, I would I would give it a three for, for these comics just because I need a little bit more information. But listeners, what did you think of these comics and how many rosters would you give it? Please let us know by leaving a comment below. We don't have any emails today, but if you'd like to get in contact with us, you can send us an email at swervesbarpodcast at gmail.com. That is S-W-E-R-V-E-S-B-A-R podcast at gmail.com. As for toys, I recently got myself a Legacy Knockout, and I really like it. And I'm surprised how they managed to retool the toy from the Jazz Mole into the Knockout Mole. It, it's pretty much the same transformation, but the cars look completely different. And I really, really like it. It's a, I'm really enjoying it. I have other news. We will be taking a two-week break once the Optimus Prime Volume 3 comes out. And after that two-week break, we will be back providing you with more content. I also want to bring up that I have a Twitch. I've been streaming Tuesdays and Thursdays on twitch.tv slash Prime, where you can catch me playing some funny games and some cool games with some of my co-hosts and friends, Onyx and Hex, and some of our other collaborators in the podcast. And you can catch me live at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you've enjoyed this episode, consider sharing it with your friend and subscribing. If you want to help out the show even further, we do have a Patreon. All of the proceeds will go through supporting the show and keeping the lights on. Of course, we have some tiers that offer other forms of gratitude, such as 3 printed files and entry to our Discord channel. You'll even get early access to our comic review videos a week before they're publicly released. Also, we have a goal to reach 500 subscribers. We'll be holding a brand new kind of giveaway we've never done before. So click that subscribe button and tell your friends it's a good time. And as always, we hope you're all staying safe out there. Thank you so, so much for listening to all our one. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Swerves Bar Podcast. You can also find us on Twitter at Swerves Bar. If you are interested in more content, try checking out the spinoff of D&D series Transform and Rollout. The second and newest season titled First Stand of the Wreckers with a brand new DM, a different story, and from what I hear, a better pilot episode than the last series. Sorry, not sorry, Onyx. Let's tune in for a preview now. Uh, so that's a five. Uh, he manages to miss again. Uh, and this time he kind of like hits his other hand as he couldn't like stop the force of the, of the attack. Okay, uh, can I do an unarmed strike with my claws? Uh, Yes, that would be your hand-to-hand attack. Okay, um, uh, that's a five. Uh, As you 
uh, try to claw at them. You manage to kind of like scrape the ice that's covering its body and not really getting to hit their their body. Okay. Uh, I while this is happening, I'm gonna switch to the other players. While this is that's this fair. air swinging <laughs> yeah, <laughs> battle happens, uh, as the and as you're looking at that bot, the other one walks up and hand cuts what? you and says, "You are arrested." What? I yes, for uh, consorting with the Septicon and planning this assault. And with that, we you do that to me. To Frostfang. No, that's even more. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Why do you hate me so much? <laughs> no. It's just so sweet I when it so happens. Hard. I tried so hard. She just has the best reaction. Mm -hmm. I tried to cut in, but you would. <laughs> I'm laughing so much. Now you step away from the body, or we're gonna make two new more bodies. Technically, should always step away. Take me on a date first. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Since wave. <laughs> this escalated quickly. <laughs> Since wave. That's how weird. This is time and place. I'm so, is this not the time? Is this not the place? <laughs> Astonishing. There is also a YouTube channel with bonus content such as video games containing funny comments and a link will be provided below. And if you are so inclined, you can support us on Patreon where you can get even more bonus content such as 3D files, access to their Discord, and listen to content before it is released to the public. More links will be provided below. End transmission.